Hello students, I am Varsha, your teacher for today. I do wish that you all are doing fine and you also remember whatever we have studied in the previous class. We were continuing the story in the kingdom of fools and you people enjoyed it a lot. So today in this session we are going to continue the same story again. Hope you will enjoy more and get through the real lesson of the story which the writer wants to convey to us through this story. Okay, so let us start. Poor thing, she is absolutely right, thought the king, weighing the evidence. We have got the real culprit at last. Get the goldsmith wherever he is hiding at once. Now the king thought, yes, this is the real reason. The dancing girl is absolutely fine, correct in her statement. Whatever has happened, it's all because of the goldsmith. He is the real culprit and he should be punished. So the king immediately ordered to get hold of the goldsmith. Immediately it should be done, carried on. The king's bailiffs searched for the goldsmith who was hiding in a corner of his shop. When he heard the accusation against him, he had his own story to tell. Now the king's bailiffs, bailiffs are the uh, royal people, the legal people, officials, those who follow the instructions of the king, of the law. So they maintain the law and order. So these people uh, went to the goldsmith to catch hold of him and he was hiding in a corner of his shop and he had already got the information, he had got the news that he was being accused by the dancing girl and now he had his own story. Now imagine what the interesting story will be. Isn't it so interesting students? I do wish that you people are really enjoying it and we have real more fun to see just after this. So he came to the king. My lord, he said, I am a poor goldsmith. It's true I made this dancer come many times to my door. I gave her excuses because I could not finish making her jewelry. Before I finished the rich merchant's orders, they had a wedding coming and they would not wait. You know how impatient rich men are? Now the goldsmith had his own story. Now what was his story? That he could not complete the task of the dancing girl because there was the assignment, there was the task of a rich merchant. The rich merchant had ordered him to make some jewelries because they had a grand wedding. And he said, you know how impatient these rich merchants are. So he kept on insisting that you should finish my work on time, on time. And I was busy in the work of the rich merchant. That's why I could not complete the task of the dancing girl. And that was the reason. Who is this rich merchant who kept you from finishing this poor woman's jewelry made her walk up and down which distracted this bricklayer which made a mess of his wall which has now fallen on an innocent man and killed him can you name him now the king was very very confused he inquired again from the goldsmith that who was this rich merchant who had ordered you to finish his task for which you could not complete the poor woman's jewelry and for which she had to walk up and down the street that which distracted the bricklayer and for what the wall was not built in a proper way and for that reason the poor burglar who was very very innocent according to the king was dead now. So he wanted the name of the rich merchant. The goldsmith named the merchant and he was none other than the original owner of the house whose wall had fallen. Now justice had come full circle, thought the king back to the merchant. When he was rudely summoned back to the court, he arrived crying. It wasn't me but my father who ordered the jewelry. He is dead. I am innocent. Now... The goldsmith, he named the merchant. It was the same merchant. You know which merchant? It was the same merchant who was the original owner of the house whose wall had fallen on the thief. So the king thought, wow, that's so wonderful. It's the natural law that the justice 
never goes to the wrong person it has come in a circle so it has come to the right place and it has come to the uh, right person so the guilty is going to be punished and who was guilty guilty person was who was at fault that was the merchant because he had only ordered the goldsmith and when this merchant was rudely summoned because he came earlier now again he was called very rudely very strictly so he was called back to the court again and he was crying because he said it was not he who had ordered the goldsmith it was his father and his father is no more there he is dead so students the story has come to a very interesting point so the story has come to the same place from where it started so first of all when the incident happened who was called the rich merchant now again it has come back to the same point okay so the king thought this was the right thing to do and he has caught the guilty but the king consulted his minister and ruled decisively it is true your father is the true murderer he is dead but somebody must be punished in his place you have inherited everything from that criminal father of yours his riches as well as his sins i knew at once even when i first set eyes on you that you were at the root of this horrible crime you must die now the king consulted his ministers what to be done and he had come to a decision he said it's fine it's correct that your father is not there but he is the murderer he is dead now but the justice should be given and as because you are his son so you inherit all his wealth even his sins so whatever he had committed you have to pay for it and because he was your father so you need to be punished we don't have any option so because you have inherited all his wealth you are living in the same house so his sins are also yours and so you have to be punished and it's a horrible crime because of the wall of your house a person has died so this cannot be ignored and the king said i was so perfect in my judgment in my decision that from the beginning only the moment i saw you i knew that you were only the criminal you were there all behind this and so you must die and he ordered a new stake to be made ready for the execution you know stake is the place where a person's head is kept and he is given the punishment so uh, the execution part the punishment part is given like this and so for that he ordered a new stake to be made ready for the execution execution of his order as the servants sharpened the stake and got it ready for the final impaling of the criminal final impaling impaling means the final punishment of the criminal it occurred to the minister that the rich merchant was somehow too thin to be properly executed on the stake he appealed to the king's common sense the king too worried about it now when everything was ready the people those who were uh, handling the stake they uh, sharpened it everything was ready and when just the criminal the rich merchant was going to be given the punishment okay at that time it was visible to the minister that the merchant was not fitting the stake properly because he was very very thin so the stake has a proper measurement so the person the rich merchant was not a proper fit for the stake now all of them were worried the king the ministers so how could it be done what shall we do he said when suddenly it struck him that all they needed to do was to find a man fat enough to fit the stake now imagine now the justice is gone somewhere else now when they saw that the rich merchant was not fitting the stake properly so now they decided that we have to find a person who was a perfect fit for the stake can you imagine the condition of this kingdom where they have diverted themselves from the real culprit okay so they are going to find out another person who is just going to fit the stake he may not be faulty he may not have any wrong intentions he may not have even any knowledge about the crime but he is going to be punished now see what happened next the servants were immediately sent all over the town looking for a man 
who would fit the stake. So the servants spread everywhere and they were searching for a person who could fit the stake. And their eyes fell on the disciple who had fattened himself for months on bananas and rice and wheat and ghee. And now whom did they get? They got the disciple who had become a big fat man now. Why? Because he was eating continuously all the food. Let it be bananas, rice, wheat and ghee. So the food had made him very very fat. And the servants of the king caught the disciple and they took him to the king. What have I done wrong? I am innocent. I am a sannyasi. He cried. He was very very surprised. He was rather shocked that I have not done anything wrong. I am not at fault. How can I do something wrong? I am innocent. I am a sannyasi. Why have you brought me here? That may be true. But it's the royal decree that we should find a man fat enough to fit the stake, they said, and carried him to the place of execution. So the servants just said that it's the royal decree, it's the royal order which we have to follow. And we have been instructed, we have been ordered to find out a person who is fit enough for the stake. And so we are obeying the instructions of our king. He remembered his wise guru's words. The disciple at this moment remembered his wise guru's words. His guru had instructed him that you should not stay here because it's a kingdom of fools. It's a harmful place. They do not have their common sense. They do not have knowledge about what they are doing. So it may be harmful for you. It's not a safe place for you to reside. Now those words were ringing into the ears of the disciple. But he has no other option. His guru had already said, he remembered his wise guru's words, this is a city of fools, you don't know what they will do next. Now those words were troubling him. He was very very regretful because he had not listened to his guru's words. He regretted that why I didn't listen to the wise words of my guru and I stayed here. He warned me that this is not the right place for me because they do not know what they are doing. They are foolish people and they may harm me. But this is all my fault. While he was waiting for death, he prayed to his guru in his heart, asking him to hear his cry wherever he was. The guru saw everything in a vision. He had magic powers. He could see far and he could see the future as he could see the present and the past. He arrived at once to save his disciple who had got himself into such a scrape through love of food. Now what happened? This disciple before getting the punishment, he prayed to his guru. He knew that his end was near, he was going to die, but there was nothing in his hands. So he prayed for the last time, he prayed to his guru that wherever you are, please listen to my prayers and I am going to get whatever I deserve. And the Guru had the magical powers. So he could see everything. He could see whatever had happened in the past, whatever is in the present and what is going to happen in the future. So immediately he arrived to rescue his uh, disciple who was in such a scrape. Scrape is such a difficult situation which his disciple was in. So he came here to save his disciple. The disciple was in such a troublesome situation only because of his love for food because he loved food he wanted to eat food and the food was very cheap here that's why the disciple agreed to stay there and that's why he had come to this situation so the guru came to his rescue as soon as he arrived he scolded the disciple and told him something in a whisper then he went to the king and addressed him O oh, wisest of kings, who is greater, the guru or the disciple? Of course, the guru, no doubt about it. Why do you ask? Then put me to the stake first, put my disciple to death after me. Now the guru had already thought of how to rescue his disciple, how to save the life of his disciple who was not at fault for anything. So just when he arrived, he scolded first the disciple that you are in the trouble only because of yourself and then 
he whispered something into the ears of his disciple and then he went to the king and addressed him that oh wisest of the kings you are such a wise king and you tell me who is greater the guru is greater or the disciple is the greater one who is greater he had this question for the king and the king without thinking anything just said yes definitely it's a guru how can the disciple be greater than him now the guru pleaded before the king that if you consider that a guru is a greater person that please put me to the stake first i am the greater person than my disciple so you should put me first to the stake and then after that my disciple should be put to the stake but i should be the first one to be put at the stake when the disciple heard this he understood and began to claim her claimer means claim me first you brought me here first put me to that first not him what a situation first the guru demanded that he should be put to the stake first and now the disciple was also claiming that not the guru should be put at the stake first but he should be killed first the guru and the disciple now got into a fight about who should go first the king was puzzled by this behavior he asked the guru why do you want to die we chose him because we needed a fat man for the stake now the guru and the disciple had a fight they were fighting that yes i should be punished first so the king was all confused puzzled he got confused he could not understand that why this guru and disciple are fighting with each other to die first what is the reason so he asked the guru that why are you fighting about the punishment why do you want to die because we chose your disciple he should be punished because he was the right fit for the stake he was a fat man and we got the fat man for the punishment but from where do you come and why do you want to die you should not ask me such questions put me to that first replied the guru now the guru was very stubborn he said you should not ask me any question i just said you to put me to that first so that should be followed why that's some mystery here as a wise man you must make me understand now the king was very confused the king thought there was definitely some reason there was some mystery cropping up some secret behind it so i should know about it so he requested the guru that you are a wise man you are a guru you should please help me to understand the situation that why why do you want to die first will you promise to put me to death if i tell you asked the guru the guru was very clever he asked the king that okay fine i would tell you everything i would tell you the truth but would you allow me for the death first would you put me to death first if i tell you the whole story the king agreed immediately the king gave him his solemn word he promised the guru took him aside now the guru took him aside out of the servant's ear shot and whispered to him do you know why we want to die right now the two of us we have been all over the world but we have never found a city like this or a king like you that stake is the stake of the god of justice it's new it has never had a criminal on it whoever dies on it first will be reborn as the king of this country and whoever goes next will be the future minister of this country we are sick of our ascetic life it would be nice to enjoy ourselves as king and minister for a while now keep your word my lord and put us to death me first remember now the guru took the king to the side where the servants could not hear anything and slowly in his ears he made up this story and told him we all could know that this was a story which he made up and said that we both the guru and the disciple have been moving all around the world but we have never come across such a beautiful city and such a great king like you and for your knowledge i should say that the stake which is there in front of you that is a stake very precious stake because that has no blood of any criminal this is a new stake so this is the stake of the god of justice it's a very uh, precious stake and whoever 
dies first will be the king of this city and after that who dies on this stake he will become the minister so that's why i and my disciple we are fighting to die first so that whoever dies first will get a chance get an opportunity to become the king wasn't it an interesting story to fool the king the king who was already foolish the king was now thrown into deep thought he didn't want to lose the kingdom to someone else in the next round of life he needed time so he ordered the execution postponed to the next day and talked in secret with his minister it's not right for us to give over the kingdom to others in the next life let's go on the stake ourselves and we will be reborn as king and minister again holy men do not tell lies he said and the minister agreed now the king when he listened to this story of the guru he was in a thoughtful condition he went into deep thought he thought deeply that it would not be justified and fair enough that somebody else apart from our people would come and rule this city so it is our kingdom i am the king so this should not be given to them at all so he had a secret conversation with his minister and what he did they decided that they should be put to death themselves so that they would be reborn as the king and the minister themselves so the king and his minister had fallen in the trap which the guru had made for this foolish people so they did not understand that this is not the way somebody can become the king and the minister if they go into the stake first but they were foolish they didn't have any common sense and the king believed the guru because he said that the holy men never speak lies the holy men never speak lies this was the belief of the king but here the guru had to save the life of his disciple so in order to save the life of his disciple he had to made up this story so that he could help and save the life of his disciple now what happened next is very interesting so he told the executioners we will send the criminals tonight when the first man comes to you put him to death first then do the same to the second man those are my orders don't make any mistake now the executioners who were going to carry on the orders who were going to punish the criminals they were ordered that the criminals will be sent to them that night and they just had to carry the orders so whoever comes first they have to put him to that first and whoever comes next because it was very important to follow the order otherwise the king and the minister's position will be changed according to the king so they ordered the same way to the executioners and instructed them not to make any mistake that night the king and his minister went secretly to the prison released the guru and the disciple disguised themselves as the two and as arranged beforehand with loyal servants were taken to the stake and promptly executed now that same night the king and his minister they secretly went to the prison where the guru and disciple were there and they disguised disguised means changed their appearance so they had a another appearance they were dressed up the same as the guru and the disciple so that others could not identify them and they went to the stake and with the help of the loyal servants who were very very loyal they were also foolish they helped the king and the minister to die to go for the death penalty so this is what happened to the foolish king and the minister when the bodies were taken down to be thrown to crows and vultures the people panicked they saw before them the dead bodies of the king and the minister the city was in confusion so when the bodies were taken down to be thrown to the crows and vultures the people panicked the people were scared why because they saw the dead bodies of the king and the minister in front of them so the whole city was in confusion their king and ministers they were dead all night they mourned and discussed the future of the kingdom the people in the kingdom were very much scared they didn't know what was the future of the kingdom and they mourned the death also they were sad mourned means when you are sad about somebody's death okay so that is called mourning and uh, they mourned the death of the king and the minister but 
they were also worried about the future of the kingdom who would rule the kingdom some people suddenly thought of the guru and the disciple and caught up with them as they were preparing to leave town unnoticed so somebody saw that the guru and the disciple they were leaving the town and uh, they were uh, hiding themselves and trying to leave the town but they caught them and they said they requested them we people need a king and a minister said someone others agreed they begged the guru and the disciple to be their king and their minister it didn't take many arguments to persuade the disciple but it took longer to persuade the guru persuade means when you request somebody when you want somebody to follow you somebody to listen to you so you persuade so it was very easy to persuade the disciple he uh, listened to them but the guru it was not very very easy he was not convinced that he should be the king but finally after so many discussion so many arguments finally the guru also agreed that he would be the king and they finally agreed to rule the kingdom of the foolish king and the silly minister on the condition that they could change all the old laws because it was very strange it was very complicated uh, whatever the kingdom was going through so they Uh, had a condition that they should be given the freedom to change the old laws then only they would rule the kingdom from then on night would again be night and day would again be day and you could get nothing for a do do it became like any other place so after that only when the guru and the disciple took over the kingdom everything went normal and the day again started with the rise of the sun and the night came with the twinkling stars and the moon so it was back to normal and the value of all the articles was not the same again you could not find everything just for a dodo so it became like any other place so that's the story which tells us that if you are surrounded by foolish people then you also are under problem because the foolish people they themselves create problems for them equally they create problems for others so it is better to avoid the foolish people if the disciple in the story would have listened to his guru's words then he would not have faced a situation like this we have already completed the chapter and you all have also understood everything properly isn't it so next is the turn of testing what you have understood so let us now discuss the question answers okay so here are the questions let us discuss in detail name all the people who are tried in the king's court and give the reasons for their trial so we already know who were the people those who were tried in the king's court okay now let us see who all were there the owner of the house that is the merchant the bricklayer the dancing girl and the goldsmith were tried in the king's court they all were tried because the thief died when the wall of merchant's house had collapsed the merchant was tried for building a weak wall the bricklayer was tried for doing his work carelessly the dancing girl was tried for disturbing the concentration of the bricklayer The goldsmith was blamed for making the dancing girl walk up and down to his house a dozen times. So these were the people and the reasons for the trial in the court of the king. Okay? Let us move to the next question. The question for you is who is the real culprit according to the king? Why does he escape punishment? So the answer is yes, you all are correct. the merchant's dead father was held responsible for making the wall weak but according to the king the rich merchant was the real culprit because he had inherited both sins as well as riches of his father so he escaped the punishment because he was too thin to fit the stake that's why he was not punished okay and the disciple came into the picture okay now let us discuss the next question The question is what are the guru's words of wisdom when does the disciple remember them here is the answer for you the guru was full of wisdom 
and knew well that the unpredictable behavior of the fools could create danger any time. The Guru's words were, they are all fools. This won't last very long and you can't tell what they will do to you next. So these were the Guru's words of wisdom. And the disciple remembered them when he was arrested by the men of the king to execute merely because he fitted the stake. It was because of the Guru's words of wisdom that the execution was postponed. Let us come to the next question. The question for you is, how does the Guru manage to save his disciple's life? Yes, I know you all got the answer. You all are correct. The answer is, the Guru arrived on time to save his disciple and created a drama. He told the king that it was not an ordinary stake and whoever went to the stake first would become the king in next life. The second to die would become his minister. The king wanted to avail himself of the opportunity. The guru and his disciple were released. Thus, the guru managed to save his disciple's life. Okay, So, that was a very interesting story and I do believe that you have learned a lot from this story and would definitely execute it in your life in an effective way. So, that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you.